You got the record for the tiniest sperm. Hey, it's a record. I'll take any record I can get. <laughs> the python hunters get out of the Everglades and take to the streets. There's one right there. And canals. I think someone really wanted to let him go. To hunt Florida's other untamable. No. These iguanas are kicking our butts, guys. And unwanted invasive reptiles. Nine monitor right on the bank. Right they tear meat, they rip it, they, they crush snails. Let me get a boat! Ow! So bit me. <laughs> invasive reptiles threaten Florida's wetlands. Oh, oh, oh. Iguanas, Nile monitors and the most notorious of all, the giant Burmese python. Snake, there's a berm right there. You got him? Oh, yeah. Now three men join forces to defend the Everglades. Biologist Sean Heflick. He's been chasing, breeding, and collecting reptiles his entire life. Oh, I've never been afraid of snakes. Exotic reptile breeder and cop Greg Graziani. He knows his pythons inside and out. I got my first Burmese python when I was 12 years old. And python breeding pro Michael Cole. He sold his designer color mutations for as much as $25,000. I've learned about reptiles the hard way. It was a passion. They are the Python Hunters. Right down there is where I caught the hatchlings, right? Somebody else caught some babies on this road, too, wasn't it? The hunters are taking a break from the swamps to catch pythons in a nearby forest. So if there's been babies caught right here two years in a row, that means there's a mother that's sticking around here. We need to get out there and start looking for her. Game on! They soon discover the perfect breeding conditions for a mother berm. It's high and dry here. Yeah, it is. This is a good ridge. But more than pythons breed here. These woods are home to four species of venomous snakes, and they bite when cornered. Hey, Sean, this looks like perfect eastern diamondback territory. Yeah, I'm with you. All these down trees, the high ground, the brush cover, the fern cover. Hey, hey, guys. Oh, there's a, hey, Greg, Greg, get your head up. There's a baby berm. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, got him. Sean, help oh. him with that. That one looks a little too big for him to handle. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta give you credit, Michael. You did scream, but it was a little more manlier than Sean's. That's a lie. <laughs> My dad taught me that the easiest way to get a snake is to let it bite you. <laughs> then, you can, then you got it. You know you got it. Like you got manhandled by a hatchling. <laughs> That's this year's. He's a hatchling. Look at his Oh, look, still got the scar. Look at that. Yeah. Get a head temp first. 79.7. And say that's awful low. Burmese pythons' head temperatures soar into the high 80s and low 90s when they've been sunning. This one is showing signs of the cold. Did you get a ground temp? Okay. 81.8. Okay. Well, here's the key for you, Michael. This one's gonna be tough. I need a length and a girth. <laughs> and oh, let us not forget a, a sex. sex. <laughs> I don't mind sex on this one. Oh, it's a male. It's a male. Definitely. Oh, yeah. It's a male. <laughs> and I did that without getting spooched. First time for everything, Mikey. <laughs> hey, little guy, hold still. Oh, come on, stretch, stretch. 34 Four and a half. half. Woohoo! Girth. Girth, baby. Three and a half inches. So this is definitely a this year's baby. I don't, I don't think there's any chance that a... The two-year-old would still be this small. Probably hatched out in mid-August, early September. So he's only a couple months old. What's the weight on that? Eight ounces. Is <laughs> that what we got? <laughs> I think you got the record for the tiniest sperm. Hey, it's a record. I'll take any record I can get. <laughs> for the python hunters, any invasive berm, even a hatchling, is too big a threat to leave in a Florida forest. We say we uh, we have something to eat and uh, Sunsets would be a good time to check this road out. Come on, baby snake master. Whoa, one more gone. When the sun goes down, the cold-blooded Burmese pythons slither out onto the highways to raise their body temperature. Warm asphalt's an excellent hunting ground. 
There's something on the side of the road right there. I saw that. What was that? I don't know. It looked pretty big, though. It looked dead. Yeah, it looked like it might have been hit. Could be a berm. Let's go back and look at it. Every year in the U.S., almost 400 million animals become roadkill. There, there, there. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a snake. Oh, it's a berm. It looks like the road crew marked it to notify somebody from FWC the location of it, make it easy to find. You think this was run over by a car on purpose or just inadvertent? It could have been just crossing the road and hit. Uh, we know people see them, they swerve to hit them, they think they're doing a, a good job. Unfortunately, sometimes at, at 60 miles an hour, they can't tell a berm from a native snake. Is there any way to tell male or female on that tail? Is there uh, enough of it to look? I mean, the only way would probably is if the spurs were. Got anything? Okay, we'll leave, we'll leave that one as unknown. Death doesn't excuse this snake from a full body examination. It only makes it safer for the hunters. How much you got there, Mike? About 54 inches. Are these the same bugs that you use to do your yeah. skeleton preps? Yeah, they're native here. These domestic beetles under there. You can see them all through here. What's right this? There. Is that a young beetle or yeah. is that a different species? No, no, there's the larva. How much time does it take for the larva to turn into a beetle? Will it do it in this carcass? Well, it depends on temperature and how much they have to eat and, you know, I would doubt it'll go all the way through in this carcass because this carcass is so... So will the larva crawl off? Yeah, the larva crawl off. So let's uh, get this thing off the roadway. Whether it's cars, the cold, or the python hunters themselves, there's no future for berms in Florida. But somehow they survive, and they're not alone. The state of Florida has almost 400 species of invasive animals. Many of them started out as unwanted pets. To curb their release into the sensitive ecosystems, the Fish and Wildlife Commission sponsors several annual amnesty days. Kind of aggressive? A little bit, yeah. A little bit. <laughs> Such an event is held at Gatorland, one of Central Florida's oldest attractions. Gatorland is devoted to crocodilians, wildlife walks, and educational experiences for families looking for something other than roller coasters in Orlando. So I got some stuff coming in, huh? Yeah, a little early. What did he bring in? Turtles. Turtles? Yeah. Tim Williams has invited Sean and Greg to offer their expert advice on invasive species. Okay. When I was a kid growing up here, we just didn't realize the impact these animals have at the time. It was an animal. Right. You know, and it gets too big or you get tired of it and chunk it, and it's just so sad. Who owns this? How you doing? I'm Tim. I'm Blue. Blue, good to see you. You're... Amber. Amber, good to see you. Tim greets new visitors and helps them get started processing their unwanted animals. Well, I think he's a marvelous looking animal, but uh, man, they grow up to be real monsters and can really do a job. As long as he's in the cage, he's fine. But if you try, he's not been used to taking out of that cage. It's better to do this than turn him loose or some, you know, take some other action with him. Yeah. In Florida, it's illegal to release a non-native animal into the wild. Come here, buddy. On Amnesty Day, owners surrender unwanted pets with no hassles and no fines. It's all right. It's all right. All these scary people manhandling you. Hmm? Do you have reptiles as pets? No, I really want them. What do you want? I want to be, I want a huge like, one like that size. What? But you got to keep it in a huge cage. I know. My mom freaks out. Oh, well, your mom freaks out. She doesn't like iguanas. Well, maybe you should get like a little ball python. They don't get very big, and they get really cool ones. Uh. And know what you're getting into before you buy it. Know what they eat, know what size of cage they need, know how long they live, know all that stuff before you buy one. Deal? Sure. Yeah, these are definitely uh, definitely the same species, and, but unfortunately they're hybrids. Red ear slider, indigenous slider. Is that good or bad? That's bad. We don't really want red ear sliders or, or hybrids. That's part of the problem. They get ah. into these waterways here, and, and they can hybridize with indigenous animals, uh -huh. and uh, and that that's not good. I didn't want to let them loose, yeah, because right. hey. I don't want them to get eaten by raccoons or anything like that. Right. I really Are care about them. You made the right decision. This one you can see, yeah, you see a little bit of red right there. Yeah. This is, a, do you know what the male look like? No. Um, I, this man sold them on the side of the road, and I got them when they were that big. You can't do that anymore. Um, you know, you can't, you can't sell 
um, aquatic turtles in the, uh -huh. in the state of Florida that are under four inches carapace length. So these little tiny quarter size hatchlings anymore uh -huh. can only be sold for educational purposes or research. And well, that's, that's what, what he, he made said. me. That's what he said. He made oh, me sign, he made a, paper sign a paper yeah. saying that that's what I was doing with them. Right, yes, that they were right. for research. Yeah, loophole, that they were for loophole, research. Loophole, loophole, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. Goodbye, <laughs> oh, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Parting with a beloved pet isn't easy, but Amnesty Day plays a vital role in protecting Florida from animals that can no longer be cared for. Are you all right? No. No? What, what's the reason for uh, turning the turtles in? Um, we have, what is that? It's like a little baby pool like you get at Kmart. Mm -hmm. it's, and, um, it's only like eight inches deep. And um, I mean, it's fine, but the, I just, like, they can't really, like, go under and swim, and they get up on their little light. But he's getting big enough where, like, if he pushes on the edge of the bricks, he can almost get out. OK. Cutie. Yeah. And you're turning into a ball python, right? right? Some people have more serious concerns about safety. I just worry, I just had a baby, and on the news, they, you know, things happening like here locally in Florida about you know snakes escaping their cage on accident and hurting the baby and one actually died locally so it just kind of brought you know a little fear to the house he has escaped a couple times in his 20 years with me so it's it was a worry they don't ever eat larger prey they don't even ever attempt to eat larger prey humans are never on their menu even the Burmese pythons um, you know that story that you saw on the news unfortunately as tragic as it was there's a lot of problems with that story see that's news they you know so right. they didn't feed them properly and he got loose. you Thank take you care of stories time. like these sound more like urban legends to the python hunters it's typical. People see that on the news and they start to get, when they have babies and they have young children, they start to get a little uh, emotional about it. Uh, I just hope we didn't talk to her too late and, <laughs> you know, the snake's already gone. Well, it'll get a good home, so ultimately it, it works itself out. The python hunters take a break from educating the public about invasive species to catch one of their own, the elusive Nile monitor lizard. The boys are on their way to a residential neighborhood in Cape Coral that's been crawling with Nile monitors for over a decade. Despite intense efforts to get rid of them, the population continues to breed here in large numbers. This is kind of ground zero for these dudes. This is where you've been seeing them in this grass. Where we've been seeing the them and uh, all the way around this area, uh, it's kind of Swiss cheese uh, burrows. Bob Mongok works for the city, setting traps in residential areas full of Niles. That is a tangled mess in there. Yes, it is. Wow, that's like Shangri-La. It's so thick and swampy, and there's no way you can follow one of these things in there. It's thick. Well, we'll keep our eyes peeled. The Nile monitor is Africa's largest lizard and can grow over two meters long. An excellent swimmer, the Nile hunts fish, frogs, snakes, and even crocodile eggs, making it an enormous threat to Florida's native animals. One local resident has gone way beyond trapping the nuisance. How are you? I'm, I'm Sean. Hi, Sean. You're the, you're the lizard dissector? I dissect the lizard. I've dissected probably five. What have you found in their guts? Their, their diets are actually really marine. I found crabs, um, a bunch of snails, and one belly, I found like 50 snail like shells. Like apple snails, big apple snails? Yeah, um, about this big. Yeah. And then the, the funniest thing, the last one I dissected, there was a whole baby turtle intact, not even digested. It was like a little yellow belly slider about this big. It had just eaten it before we captured it. It was just a whole baby turtle. I was amazed. Do you have any knowledge of maybe who or where the original Niles that are in this area got released or how they got released? I think someone really wanted to let them go and really wanted them to live here because that's why there's so many. The python hunters look in on one of Bob's Nile monitor traps. How long's this trap been out? Well, we just put it out this morning. Is this a typical spot where you've been catching them? Well, sure. Like this it? is uh, southwest Cape Coral, and that's where we uh, primarily catch them all. This does look like a great area. You've got a lot of 
thick brush around the canal in this corner here. We've got a complete vacant lot across the street. There's lots of places for them to go here and there to and stay under cover, so it makes sense for them to be in a place like this. Let's uh, skate on down this uh, shoreline here and see if we can see anything. Check this big snail shell out. That is a huge, ah, there's a couple of them right here. A, Those are huge. Those monitors wouldn't be sucking yeah. something that big down, but all of the babies and that, they would just be eating them like candy. Is that an invasive species or is that Yeah, the... those are non-native. Ours don't get that big. Oh, well look, right here, look at this. Here's a, here's a, a mass of natives, which is the white, the bigger ones on the left, and then it's the non-natives right here, the pinkish ones. The snail eggs are a clear example of how non-natives are competing with and threatening local species. Using the same exact habitat and niche. Oh, look at this, look at this. If you can see out there, see all the, the young snails on those roots? And they're all over. Just under the water's surface, it is just covered in snails. They said they found in the belly of those. Tons those of them. She said close to 100 or whatever. Yeah. I believe it. Look at this. This well, is just like a buffet. There, yeah. This thing looks like it just wants a kiss. Sean, you going to eat that or what? <laughs> Let's let him go back down here. Lots of good food for Nile monitors here, that's for sure. So you've seen this guy? Yeah, several times. Yeah? My son saw him, as a matter of fact, yesterday night when he was walking the dog. You saw him right here? Right here, yes. He walks around the neighborhood, goes over the street. My son saw him yesterday night. Wow. He walks over my seawall and lives like three houses down the road. What happens if somebody tries to approach him or you get close to him? I tried that once. If you come close enough, it stops a little bit. It comes a little closer, it runs, it jumps in the canal. You afraid of these things? You think they're a, a safety issue? I got, I got respect. It's what I hear of them. If they buy it, it's getting nasty, you know? It's a wild animal, but afraid, I would say no. You said you uh, have them around your seawall and there's uh, a burrow or something over at your place. Could we go take a look at that? You can have a look at it, of course. Jeez, look at these shells. Holy cow. This Nile is using a dock as a perfect cover for its burrow. We've got a nice spot to eat. That looks like a couple of burrows, and I can see one from this angle. Yeah, there's a bunch of them here. But there's so much food here and cover that they're just in heaven. Ugh, I've never seen a snail population like this. Niles are extremely aggressive and have voracious appetites. They'll eat almost anything, even small domestic animals like cats. I smell something dead. Turtle. Yep, soft shell. Hey, Sean. Dead turtle for you. Stinky. Would a monitor get a hold of, uh... I doubt it. Doesn't have any scrapes on it, no bite marks, no nothing on the thing. Guys, something big right here just went in. Yeah, I heard it. It was not turtle-like. It was it was gator or lizard-like going in. You could hear the swish. Man, that is one elusive little creature. Niles are much harder to catch than berms. They can run up to 25 kilometers per hour and have been known to stay underwater for up to 60 minutes. They usually come back up. They usually don't sit if they're unmolested. Yeah, there's enough foliage, though, that he could have squeezed up, just yeah. have his nose up in that over there, not seen. All right, well, let's head on, uh, continue that direction, and uh, see if we find another one. For the hunters, pulling out the heavy artillery means climbing on the back of a truck where they stand a greater chance of sighting the monitor. I gotta tell you, it feels weird. Been running around the Everglades, back roads, and never see people for days hunting Burmese pythons, and all of a sudden we're driving in people's backyards looking for Nile monitors. It's a whole different world. There's one right there. I see him. He's walking right through the grass. Right. Yeah, he's still there. He's still there. He's going into the swamp. He's going right into that thick grass.
I think he headed deep in. I'm, I'm standing in an area where he's got to be down. I think he ditched. I think I he went in. There. Come here. Look at this. It's all matted down? It's all matted down right here just behind the grass. Yeah. So nobody can see him. He's got a trail coming yeah. in this way and a trail going out right through there. You can sun right here all you want. I think I heard him off to the left when I was standing yeah. there. When you guys came up on him, was he moving because of the vehicles, or was he just on? He was move? just he was just moving. He was just back and forth, kind of meandering okay. like they do, you okay. know, side to side. Once they head into this, there's no way no. to track them through no this way. stuff. You poke an eye out and lose a testicle or something. You talk them into do a controlled burning. They're not going to do a controlled burning. Not burn of these houses here. Have you looked here. at the neighborhood? <laughs> yeah, that's not going to happen. Have you looked at this castle over here? I'm not thinking they want a controlled burn. <laughs> what worries me though is your truck is so loud. Damn. <laughs> and he's half blind. <laughs> oh, we still love you, Mike. Well, Mikey, don't go away mad. Just go away. <laughs> the Nile hunt ends empty-handed. The python hunters may have to rethink their strategy. I don't think from today's experiences so far, we're just going to jump out and go chase them down and grab them. We're going to have to figure out a better game plan for that. While Michael and Greg carry on hunting Nile monitors. Well, that was kind of like four and a dud. Oh, oh man, you got the good rocks, though. <laughs> John's at home teaching Thorn and a friend about a newly rescued native. Hey, uh, Tom Sawyer and Huck Finn, come here. Check this out. I just picked this up. I got a call. I said, come and get it, or we're going to kill it. You may want to step back. And I'm going to back up. <laughs> the eastern diamondback rattlesnake is a native species feared in Florida for its deadly hematoxic bite. Hey. <laughs> Where are you going? Hematoxins attack the arteries and veins. They destroy red blood cells and damage organs and tissue. Even a quick sprint to the hospital won't always save an injured limb. Got you an eastern? Yeah, eastern diamondback. Look at the rattle on this thing. Ooh, it's a big female. You're pretty. You even kiss her for us? Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Quick like lightning. The eastern diamondback rattlesnake is North America's largest venomous snake. A two and a half meter long rattler can strike its victim more than a meter away. But look out, it doesn't always rattle before striking. Oh, there I am, huh? A little bit of heat. Uh, hey, sweetie. Hmm? Look at you. She's good. We've got an agreement. I don't get any closer to her, and I don't hurt her. And, you know, she, she keeps her distance as well. Tanner, you were here when we caught that other one right out front of the house. Yep. Thorne thought it was a stick. <laughs> yeah, that one. I forgot about that. It's hard for me. I understand people are really, really afraid of these animals, and this is a really bad bite. I mean, you know that. This is a really bad bite. I've been warning you about this since you were little. Venom on these things, highly toxic, really catalytic and just destroy muscle tissue and, uh, I mean, causes real se severe necrosis. You can lose fingers, you can lose hands, you can lose mobility in, you know, in your hand or in, in the limb. This is definitely a snake you don't want to get bit by here in Florida. She's using that rattle to say, hey, you know, I'm dangerous, stay away from me, I want to be left alone. See, she doesn't even... What? Yeah, here I am. Well, see, it's still defensive, she's coiled up, She's trying to protect herself. She's got the rattle going. Leave me alone, leave me alone, leave me alone. You just need love, don't you? Hmm? So what are you gonna do with this one, Dad? We've got that preserve down the road and across the street. I think maybe I'll release her into there. It's perfect habitat. I may hang on to her, put a couple meals in her, and uh, give her a head start because the winter's on its way. And Ooh, she's heating up. Look at her go. Tail's working overtime. You want to bring me that tub and pack her up?
While Sean prepares a juicy rat for his new lodger, Greg and Michael continue their quest to capture a Nile monitor lizard. After a washout in Cape Coral, they hatch a new plan and head east to another canal in crisis. What's up, Nick? Hey, Michael, how you doing? Pretty good. Man, you're all Local right. breeder and collector Nick Mole captures invasive species in Florida's canals. If you have any ideas of how they got here. Local pet store that also did some importing uh, may have unintentionally had them released, uh, and they started to populate uh, the canal, which is right behind their facility. Unintentional releases are often attributed to hurricanes. Some people prefer to set reptiles free rather than leave them caged to face winds of 280 kilometers per hour. People often dismiss the little babies as an unassuming threat. A lot of times they'll get out and uh, dismiss it, but the fact of the matter is they go from a lizard that comes in as a size this size and goes to six, seven feet in length and is capable of wreaking havoc. So. Well, why don't we uh, take a run out in your boat and uh, survey the area? My wife calls this uh, the yacht. The yacht? Oh, yeah, this is the yacht. The yacht takes the hunters onto a canal tracing the highway toward Palm Beach International Airport. But it may as well be in the middle of a South American jungle. Hey, there's a big male iguana right there. He's orange, look at him. Iguanas are no Nile monitors. You see him, Nick? Let's come in. But they are another one of Florida's invasive species that competes for space with native animals and damages infrastructure. He goes, he's going, he's going, he's going. Let's see where he's going, he's going higher. All right, all right, he's right above it. Get up there, Michael, get up there. Ah. Michael, get up there, Michael. <laughs> Come on, Michael. <laughs> Michael, get up there and get an eye on him. Iguanas will jump six meters or more out of trees to avoid being captured. We go into these palms. We probably went, yep, there he goes. Oh, he's in the boat. We had nobody in the boat. I almost, I almost <laughs> he, had him. He, he jumped been, right in the boat. Get in the boat, guys. Son, he was right here. <laughs> God. That was a monster male. Yeah, it was a yeah, monster. Was. Iguanas are capable of producing clutches of 60, 70 eggs in a shot and uh, two or three times in a season. So it's not going to take long with just a few breeders for them to totally repopulate this canal. Oh, big guy, big guy, big guy, right here. I see him. on the grass right there. See him? People have been releasing iguanas into canals for over 40 years. Now their descendants are out of control. Just lift your head up when you want me to come. Keep going, Joe. He's headed back the other direction. He's too thick. We're not going to find him now. Man, this is frustrating. Uh, this sucks. Is that a big ass iguana right there on that tree? Oh, yeah. Look. Yeah. Whoa. Wow. Yeah, it is. Look at his tail hanging down. He's already laying down. Look, look, look. He's already, his head was perched up. He's already laid down against that branch, and he wants to look like part of that tree. If he had his tail laying along that branch, I'd have never seen him. His tail hanging down is what gave him away. So yeah. what's the plan? We're going to send Michael up around the backside? We're going to need someone to scare him, and then we're going to need someone to catch him, so. I'll come down and scare him down. See that den? Yeah. Oh, he is a ways up there. He is right at the crook in the tree. He's bedded down. He's not planning on leaving that branch. Tell me when. Go, anytime. Get him? No. Uh, Son of a right in front of us. Man, that was a beautiful dive. Yeah, he dove almost right at me, but all it was was a pure missile coming straight at me. That was a howitzer. Boom! These iguanas are kicking our butts, guys. Despite all the action, chasing iguanas only distracts Greg and Michael from the real prize. Where's the Niles at? You guys just have to believe me. They're here. They're here. We've been hearing that. We've been up and down this uh, canal here, seeing iguanas all over the place. The, the Nile monitor is a monitor. It's a much more intelligent lizard than an iguana. Uh, they're, they're much better at hiding. They, they establish elaborate burrows. None of that means anything. <laughs> Your credibility's on the line. Uh -huh. I'm going to prove you guys wrong. We're waiting to see it. 
After two hunting trips, Greg and Michael have yet to bag a big lizard. Until they find a way to catch them, the Nile hunt is on hold. Educating kids about Florida's invasive species is just as important as catching unwanted invasives. For Greg, that means packing up his critters for a presentation at Lane's school. Everybody should be nice and calm. Actually, he's right there for you. If you can tail him and pull him out. Yeah, well, I don't want to get wet this morning. I'll do um, it. I'll do it. Just don't fall in on your head, please, Lane. Now he knows what's going on. He's going to try and stay on the bottom. Got him. You got to hang on. All right, good job, good job. Wow. Oh. Hey, I wasn't going to get wet this morning. Right in the eye. <laughs> Doesn't have him. Lexi, you want to try? Get your tail up. There you go. Got his tail. Hold him. Just hold him in there. Hold him in there and don't splash. <laughs> Lexi, right, getting I got wet. I got him. I got him. It's all right. Jeez. There you go. We haven't had Skipper out in a while. You hear him? He's a little agitated. Don't get alligator all over you. How you doing, buddy? Usually he wouldn't try to even bite us. Oh, he's he? not. He, shy? He's, he just wants to get down. He, he doesn't want to bite us. But if I put my <laughs> finger in his mouth, <laughs> he will bite. He'll chomp down on it, that's for sure. All right, go ahead and set him down in there. Lane selects a pet not many nine-year-olds can handle, a three-meter-long reticulated python. Get his head quickly and control it, or he's going to keep crawling back in. There you go. Lexi grabs a threatened species and a native to Florida, the eastern indigo. You hold this. Hey, Mom, remember that one time that the snake peed on me at the presentation? Everyone remembers that. That was in my <laughs> class last year. Dad wrangles the intimidating Burmese python. Oh, Ted, dear me. Do we need anything else out of here? I got it. I got it. Now we got to get Jack. Good job. Jack is Greg's most prized critter, one of less than 50 albino alligators in the world. There we go. That makes him a valuable addition to Greg's family. And a hit at school presentations. Can we clean him up at all or no? Huh, I think. Like yeah, I think he's pretty clean. He's got reverse going on. Yeah, he sure does. <laughs> Put him in his bag in a while. Uh, we need a bigger bag. Yeah, he does need a bigger bag. Ah, uh, he'll be okay. For, for now. now. Yeah. Greg and Sean share a passion for albino alligators. Look at Ice. Ice knows what's up. They've been competing to become the first person in the world to breed them in captivity. Yeah. All right. Morning. You hungry? Yeah, back up a little bit. Back up. Back up. No. Back up. What'd I say? After purchasing their Louisiana-born gators, the race was on. Nilla, come on, girl. Come on. Then, in August 2010, Sean became the first to produce the prized gator in captivity. Good girl, Noah. Your babies are doing good. Yeah. Your babies are doing good. I guess yours too, huh, Big Papa? Not that you care. If they were out here, you'd try to eat them, wouldn't you? you try to eat them like snacks. Unfortunately, that's what bull gators do sometimes, is eat the babies. All right, be good. We'll be back. Look at you guys. They're my kids. They're my children. A lot of people thought that albino alligators wouldn't reproduce, that they, you know, had some lethal gene um, or, or some sterility, which would preclude them from, you know, having fertile offspring. You know, when we got the eggs and you helped me take them out of the, out of the nest, we were psyched. And then when we saw that the eggs were fertile, we were even more pumped up. And then when these things pipped out, this household was just, you know, on cloud nine. And the best part of it is, Greg thought that he was going to do it first. We beat him. You're laughing at Greg? Yeah, that's funny, isn't it? Yeah. Laugh it up. Greg does about a dozen school presentations each year. 
How you guys doing today? Good. In okay. Florida, educating children about snakes and alligators is just as important as learning to swim. How, how many of you guys have seen the show Python Hunter? OK, do you guys remember a snake? Do you remember a snake that got all chewed up by the vultures? Oh, yeah. Guys, I got a burn. Bad shape. Oh, man, something's been eating him. He's alive. He's very much alive. Look oh, at my God. that. Ugh. Look at the injuries to that animal. Oh, my. Watch, watch. You got it? Bad Something soul. literally ate this while it was alive. While it was alive, couldn't get away. Wow. If you look at the beaks on vultures, they're tough. I mean, they are designed to rip flesh. See this? Boom. That's Boom. a mouth. Yeah. Boom. 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 That's chunks taken you out. Know? Just chunks after chunks. I will lay Eat money em. that when this thing was cold in a catatonic state almost, something was picking it. Something just came up and, and was eating it alive. We named that snake Chewy because he got chewed up by the vultures, OK? And Chewy's healed up. And he's one of the snakes now that we use to train other snake catchers on how to catch wild pythons. But I don't want anybody to walk up on the snake because this snake will strike and bite. We'll make sure he doesn't get under the truck, and we're going to make sure he doesn't get to the people, OK? You want this? Chewie's going to try and bite, and he's going to get upset. Although this Burmese python has been in captivity for a while, it's still dangerous. Good shot. Oh. That's nasty. The berm is Florida's most notorious invasive species. Greg uses him to share a valuable lesson with the kids about them. All right. We have some animals here, like the Burmese pythons, that aren't supposed to be here. So we want to remove those out of the environment so that you guys can still enjoy the Everglades the way it's supposed to be with the indigos and the king snakes and the rat snakes and the things that are supposed to be there. One of the things that we like to teach people is how big the animals get, because when people see them in the pet store like this and they're really small, they don't realize that they're going to get big enough to eat large rats and rabbits. And then they don't know what to do with the animals. So if you're ever looking for a pet, especially a reptile or something that's not mainstream, you guys want to do research on the animal and find out what it eats and how big it's going to get. Reticulated pythons grow between 7 and a half and 10 and a half meters long, so they aren't easy pets to feed or house. How big around can they get? That snake can get big enough around to eat a small deer. <laughs> sometimes even bigger. There are big, beautiful native snakes in Florida as well. This is the largest native Floridian snake that we have is the eastern indigo. <laughs> He's going through a shed right now, and that's, that's something that a lot of people don't ever get to see them actually shed. But it just slides right off. Right where it has slid off, the snake is actually sterile at that point. So right now, this snake is as clean as it could possibly be. Here's something really interesting, too, I'm going to show you. They actually have a scale over their eye. And when I peel this back, it's going to be like a contact lens that comes right off their eye. Now, we can pass those around. I'm going to bring out this next one. As you can see, I don't have any tape on him, which is why we're not going to let anybody pet him right now, OK? Yeah, he's actually getting heavy. I'm going to let him sit on my lap here for a minute. When he gets this big, only bigger oh, alligators God. and people. Oh. Oh, What's that? This is the second time this has happened to me during a presentation. <laughs> <laughs> well, you want to hold Jack? He hasn't peed yet. Sure. Wait, yet? <laughs> yet. You're going to have to uh, hang on to him, because he's a lot stronger than you're used to. Get over that tail. I need this arm back. There you go. You got him? All right. Better not start swimming, buddy. <laughs> Let it just relax, and let's get him to calm down for a second. And if he pees, he's all yours. 
No, I'll hand him over to you. <laughs> you know, it's really important that we get the information out to these younger kids and educate them about the reptiles so that when they look at these animals for pets, we want to make sure that these invasive animals don't end up out in the wild and, and injure or destroy our ecosystem. Greg loves teaching, but duty calls. On their last hunt for the Nile monitors, Greg and Michael found nothing but iguanas. Get him? No. Uh, Son of a Today, they've returned to the same canal with Nick to decide once and for all if any Niles live here. They tear meat, they rip it, they, they crush snails. You know, they, they definitely uh, have a much more powerful bite than uh, sna any snake. As painful as a burn bite is, it doesn't have that pressure, and it doesn't have that just slash cut that these non-monitor's teeth do. Two years ago, Michael almost lost his finger when it was viciously shredded by a monitor bite. Monitor, monitor, right there. Monitor, Nile right monitor, there. Nile monitor. Nile monitor, right on the bank. Right here, right here. Right on the bank back there. All right, you're going in. Finally, the hunt is on. Go by and recon first. God, if I get this, this is huge. We got to get this. Oh, man, he's hard. He's going to be hard to get. I thought he was in a more open area. Right there. He's looking at us now. Turn around and nose into him. If he runs up towards Michael, we're golden. He, he's, he's moving. He's moving. He's, he's moving. going back. He's going quick, quick, quick. Spin us around. Spin us around. God. That's definitely confirmation that they're here. Oh, yeah. The thing we need to do is come back here with a little bit better ammunition. We're not prepared for these lizards. They're much no, no, they're quicker. Nile, Nile, Nile. Turn around, turn around. He's right there. He's right there. He's right there. He's coming down. Yeah, we're getting it. Didn't you just pay attention to what he did? Yeah, but he was out farther. What is the definition of insane? Hey, he went underwater. I didn't. Just went down in the burrow. Wow, he's drunk some dead meat in there. You can yep. smell that, too. Yeah. yeah they're, sure. they're pulling the roadkill, dragging it down here off the road into their burrows, and that's a nice smell. We've seen two in, you know, 50 to 100 yards. Woo! We can just isolate this population and, and get some good trapping and good, uh, good hunting on them. We might be able to shut these guys down. No, I'm just uh, I'm getting a feet. GPS here. We're going to put yeah. a drop pin right here. Why don't you send a text while we're standing here right now to the invasive species coordinator at FWC? All right, I'll send it to him right now. With Nick's Nile monitor sightings now confirmed, the hunters can't resist trying to catch one with nothing but their bare hands and a boatload of bravado. Nile on the bank. You got his tail? Watch out, watch out. He, he can't turn in that pipe. I got his tail. <laughs> where, where is I your... Which that? way did he go? Feel that? Yeah, 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 yeah. You got that. A good size lizard. No, get, a, get a grip and maybe swap out. I don't know if, if there's enough room to even move my hand out of the way. You, you got it. OK. Got it? Yeah. OK. Yep. All right. Good grip? Got it. All right. God, he's wedged. Hey, I'll tell you what we can do. But you know There's what? a tip of this tail. We can get DNA. We can take the tip of this tail that's broke. You feel it? Ow! Son of a bit me. Really? Yeah, hell yeah, he did. Look at the slime on my thumb. <laughs> <laughs> look, at, look at how dirty my hand is, and look at where he oh, cleaned yeah, off he my you. thumb. <laughs> a Nile bite can be very dangerous and painful and should be tended to by a physician. While they aren't venomous, their saliva does contain nasty bacteria that can cause severe infections. He's off in the unknown. At least we can say we all had our hands on one. <laughs> I touched it. You touched it. I got bit by it. He got bit by it. You had your hands on it. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. I just think the chances of us actually being able to capture them right now is, is slim with, what, none, with, what, with the tools we've got, is slim to none. We're going to have to come back with a nut gun and with nighttime, whatever it is we need to do. You don't bring a knife to a gunfight. Or in the case of invasive lizards, empty hands to a Nile monitor hunt. Let's see what we got. Test this new nut gun out, baby.
Net guns capture wildlife without causing death or injury. But this one came without instructions in English. My, this <laughs> one's like Mandarin Chinese. Crap. Guess I should have studied up, huh? Nile monitors run away from humans at the slightest sign of danger. A Chinese jigsaw puzzle. But with nine square meters of net and a striking distance of over 12 meters, like escape is practically impossible. Where did I put the round at? There's my powder charge. Smart hunters test their gear. And with two unknowing volunteers in sight, this net is about to take its maiden voyage. What do you think he's doing? Uh, and here he comes. What do you gun. got? Hey, boy. He's got a gun in his hand. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Almost had you, baby. <laughs> that worked pretty decent. Yeah, that came out beautifully. Yeah, as long as it works. If I hadn't pulled my shot, I think I'd have Greg all right there. <laughs> I noticed he was aiming more towards me than you. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that, too. I was happy that. That was that. a bigger target. I had to go for the biggest target. You goes there. You plan on using that now? Huh? So we using that again, or oh, what? I was being ready. Just being ready, walking around with a live load in there. What? Your nose going. Come on, man. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I caught one, Mikey. <laughs> yeah. Can you get out of that? No. Yeah, I'm sure well, I can get out of it. He's got now his now head. He's got his head through hole. This saw them work real nice on those nine monitors, boys. Oh yeah. Now fully armed, they've returned to Nick's infested canal to catch their first Nile. Yes. This, the net gun extraordinaire Nile monitor assassin pistol. And if Greg gets too out of line, I'll just net gun his ass. It's gotta go this way, obviously. <laughs> With the net gun packed, Sean takes the lead and the catch position in his boat. Well, from what we've been seeing, uh, just like over in Cape Cory, look at that tree right there. It is just plumb full of those exotic apple snails, and we're seeing them all over the banks. And, uh, you know, they were finding hundreds of those in the stomachs of those Niles they necropsied. So you can, you can uh, pretty much bet that here, that's probably primarily what they're eating as well. Well, this is their perfect habitat. There's holes there, holes there, holes there. Great places for them to crawl into and den. We've got a Nile monitor right there. You see it? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's straight off, straight off the bow. Two and a half feet above the water right there. That net might get through there close enough to... Yeah, I got it. ...to do something. That's his burrow right there. The left one? Yeah. yeah. Look, right yeah, above the cup. Toward... Now, when do you want me to start heading in towards no, Hang on, Nate. Not yet. I want to check this out. He's in a massive tangle. Yeah. His yeah, head, problem is his head is sticking right out this side. All we can do is try this net, and let's see what we get. Get her, get her, get her. Woohoo! Yeah! Got her? <laughs> oh, get that up. Let me see that. Let me see that. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's gorgeous. Look at that freaking thing. Look at the, look Wait, at this make, thing. Hold make on. sure he's got a good grip. I got it. I got it. Yeah. She I got I've got his back she's, legs she's, here. She's coming out fighting. If look she comes at loose. that color. Look and at she that. is gorgeous. When they get something in that mouth between the razor sharp teeth in there, and when, when they grab a hold of something, if they can't swallow it right down, these front claws will just shred it. Look at that. It's like a velociraptor right there. Did you see when I laid my hands on her and we both tumbled to the ground? The python hunters have finally captured their first Nile monitor. 
The animal's journey from pet to problem to property of Fish and Wildlife Commission has given Sean, Michael, and Greg a taste for a new mission to take on Florida's most destructive and invasive species, wherever they may be, wherever they roam free. Good grab, man. <laughs> she almost hit me on my nipple. <laughs>